The future of Dunedin's hospital is a very hot topic, with the City Council preparing and announcing its plans to keep it. In the studio I have Dr David Clark. Um, David, this is a very, very tense time for you. Only a fortnight ago you took over this portfolio, but you've had an association with it previously. Dunedin City Council has stated very clearly that this is a not negotiable situation, that there will remain a central hospital in Dunedin Central. As health spokesperson, what are your plans for the role and how do you feel about this proposal by DCC? Well, thanks for having me here, Craig. Oh, good um, it, I'm, I'm really pleased to be speaking about this. It's something I feel very passionately about as somebody who is uh, the, the Member of Parliament for Dunedin North mm -hmm. and as somebody who cares deeply about our health system. I think the DCC are absolutely right. It has to be a central city hospital. It is the gold standard worldwide. You can think of the Mayo Clinic and other um, world-class places. It's where everyone tries to get to, to have the university uh, and the city and uh, the hospital all in the same place. So you've actually got um, the, the benefits that come from bringing the, the academics and the uh, hospital together. So we've got right now what is accepted as world's best practice. Yes. Unfortunately, the hospital has been allowed to run down. Uh, we've got operating theatres that leak uh, and we've got plenty of other examples, asbestos in the buildings and so on. The consultants have been really clear that have gone over this hospital with a fine-tooth comb, mm -hmm. we need to rebuild especially the clinical services wing of the hospital. Right. And the government's put money aside for that. The main problem is they've taken a long time to commit to the rebuild, to find the site right. and to get on with the task. And they keep saying it's seven to ten years away. They've been saying that for nearly four years now. Right. Uh, and I don't think that's acceptable. Before the last election, I asked the previous health minister, Tony Ryle, and said, Tony, when can we expect a business case for the hospital? This was 2014. He said, before the end of the year, there will be one before Cabinet. Now, we are told now that the final business case is to be expected in 2018. It's actually further away now than it was in 2014. And I don't think that's acceptable. I think there's been delaying going on. There's a lack of political will to spend the capital and get on with the job. So, we've got a really great service. We've got it in the right place, the right location. We're ticking all the boxes. And yet, every year, every budget, fewer funds are provided into a service or, or provision for a service which is actually having higher demands placed upon it. No one is taking the petitions which you addressed to, to government mm. most recently. Mm. No one's taking it seriously. Well, <sighs> yeah, it, it is really worrying that the, the level of neglect in the health system. Mm. Independent research by Infometrics has looked at the Treasury numbers and taking aside wage pressures, just looking at demographic pressures and inflation in the health sector, 1.7 billion has been stripped out over the last six years and that's having a devastating effect on our health system. The staff are incredibly stretched and, and you go into the hospital there are some amazing people who work long hours uh, and they are dedicated and caring but they are really stretched and they can't uh, go on forever being stretched further. Something is going to give well, the and, entire, and we're the, seeing that happen. The entire mechanism is completely counterintuitive now with fewer services being able to be provided and yet higher demands. The conditions are pretty bad in the hospital. Let's say the government do everything wrong and say, look, this is not going to happen, you're not going to have it. What can you do and what are you like? Well, look, to do? Um, first and foremost, we're seeking to get elected in September this year. It is election And we year. will commit yeah. to rebuilding the hospital. We have. We campaigned on that actually last election because we thought it should have been happening already, long ago by now, uh, having been started. And um, there are Australian examples. The interesting thing is that Australia itself has had a hospital building boom over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. So there are loads of consultants and specialists out there who've built hospitals just across the ditch. And we're not drawing on their experience. Expertise. They've built hospitals the size of Dunedin uh, in four years, uh, including the planning phases. And we keep getting told five to seven years, and I'm, I'm afraid it's just not good enough. What we actually need is commitment to the capital and just to get on with it. And, and Dunedin people, if you ask anybody in the street, they know we need a decent hospital here. It serves a huge region, twice the size of Belgium, the Southern mm -hmm. DHB, yes. twice the size of Belgium. And, um, you know, services need to be delivered right here in Dunedin, and it's good for the university, it's good for the city, but more than anything else, New Zealanders deserve access to decent quality health care at an affordable price. We are a first world country and we can afford this. Dr David Clark, thank you so very much. Great sound bites. Good luck with your political you career.